I think of Money in the Bank for WWE as being similar to the draft for a sports fan. Because when you think about it from a WWE fan standpoint, it's a way to think about the future. The hope springs eternal. Here's a fresh start. Somebody taking that next step. Similar to the NFL draft or the NBA draft. Specifically, let's focus on the NFL draft. You know, no matter where your team is at, the draft comes around. There's always hope you're going to find that next big thing. And when it comes to WWE and money in the bank, isn't that ultimately the name of the game? In most cases with money in the bank is finding the next big thing. Because more often than not, the person that wins money in the bank is somebody that you're looking at as being a future player and they're using that as a stepping stone to help launch to that next step. Doesn't always work out like that, I understand, but that's the general premise here. So, you know, folks get excited about Money in the Bank every year because they're looking ahead to that next wave. But this year, really wasn't a whole lot to look forward to, let's be honest. Because when you look at the general cast of characters that up until Monday were announced as being part of Money in the Bank, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. And now, with the announcement of Logan Paul being added to the Money in the Bank ladder match, you got a little bit of sizzle, some star power in a match that so badly fucking needed it, and honestly, let's cut through the bullshit. Logan Paul should be the guy to win Money in the Bank, cash in on Seth Rollins, and become the next whatever the fuck heavyweight champion. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of you in the comments with your flaming keyboard fingers of fire talking about, oh my God, how can Logan Paul just come in there? He didn't even have to work a qualifying match. Them's the fucking breaks. Oh my God, he hasn't been there for years. It's another part-timer. What happened to paying your dues? You know, paying your dues is one thing, but how about for all of these cats that have been in the business for a long time, paying their dues? Maybe they just need to fucking get better. Maybe they're not good enough. Maybe instead of learning how to do all those stupid gymnastic moves and all those fucking flips and kicks, the no selling, the high spots, all the bullshit. They should have learned how to talk on a microphone. They should have learned how to be a character, how to be a performer, perhaps some fucking acting lessons, because a lot of them sure the hell could have used it, that's for damn sure. But I can't imagine looking at this year's Money in the Bank roster for that match and having a strong visceral reaction to Logan Paul winning the fucking thing. Like, if you're a big advocate for LA Knight, I get it. I understand. I don't disagree with you. He is the only other fucking guy that is a valid, legitimate choice here. And honestly, the reality is that Logan Paul being a viable, legitimate option for money in the bank is not something you should complain about about Logan Paul getting that spot. You should be asking yourself, why the fuck can't the people that are in the business do a better job of actually getting over? Well, the WWE writes for these guys. What the fuck are they supposed to do? Like they don't write for Logan Paul when he comes to? Hey, ding dong, dumb dicks, guess what he does? He finds a way to get himself the fuck over. So maybe... If these other superstars, these talents were actually talents that knew how to do their fucking job, you wouldn't have to bring in a Logan Paul from goddamn YouTube and have him be arguably your most credible winner for Money in the Bank. LA Knight. I get it again. If you want to go into the comments and say he should be the guy that wins it, I'm not even going to fucking argue with you at this point. Because he would be the one other option, right? Although I could say, LA Knight is over, but he doesn't have to win it now. He doesn't. It feels like it's been positioned that way, sure. But he doesn't have to. 
But I mean, honestly, you look at some of these other fucking names. Ricochet? You gonna have him win Money in the Bank? Fuck out of here. Shinsuke Nakamura? Not gonna, not gonna, not go down that path again, that's for damn sure. He's been in the main event scene before. He's in his spot for a reason. He don't fucking need to be there. Santos Escobar? Bitch, please. Butch? Really? Damian Priest? I don't know about that. That's a big stretch to go from a secondary player in the Judgment Day to winning money in the bank. You can say, well, he main evented a pay-per-view against Bad Bunny. Yes, he did. Relatively speaking, wasn't even technically the match to go on last. But he was a headline act. But it was also against Bad Bunny. It was also in Puerto Rico. It's a unique set of circumstances. That's a big difference from him carrying money in the bank. No. The only two viable options are L.A. Knight and Logan Paul. And honestly, as you talk about going into the summer, and especially in a couple of months you're going to be dealing with NFL season, and with Seth Rollins right now being the champion on Raw, you're going to get to that point in time where the WWE is going to need a major shot in the arm. And frankly, I think Logan Paul being somebody that you can have as a Money in the Bank winner and then cash in on Seth Rollins gives you more juice in the short term that you might need than a L.A. Knight. He does. L.A. Knight is cool, but he also doesn't come with a fan base of 20 plus million YouTube subscribers where a couple of million of them on average watch one of the guy's videos. And here's the thing, like if you're thinking about realistically, if you're talking about L.A. Knight or Logan Paul, who has the better history with Seth Rollins? Who has the better story with Seth Rollins? Who has more that they could do with Seth Rollins? It's not L.A. Knight, it's Logan Paul. And we've already seen him and Seth Rollins go out there and tear the house down at WrestleMania. So... You want to throw out there a couple of more matches between these two guys? I get it. It is perfect. And frankly, right now, if you look at Seth Rollins as a champion, who does he really have to feud against? You're going to say Finn Balor? That is a massive fucking stretch. I know that's the title match and money in the bank, but Finn ain't on that level. Give me a goddamn break here. Are you serious? He's an afterthought in his own fucking faction. He is. So, when you think about Logan Paul, he can actually get heat, he gets a reaction, he's good in the ring, he knows how to be a character performer, he knows how to tell a story, he has that kind of special skill that so many of these people that actually break into wrestling don't have a fucking clue about. Not only would I not bitch about a guy who, yeah, I find irritating as shit in Logan Paul, would I not complain about him winning Money in the Bank? I wholeheartedly endorse it. When you look at the WWE and other position right now, Seth Rollins, Logan Paul is a much better feud, especially if you want Seth Rollins to stay babyface and you want Seth Rollins to have something to chase, then have him chase Logan Paul. You could have freaking Logan Paul face off against LA Knight at SummerSlam and lose. So you give LA Knight a big spotlight featured match and come out the end of that night and still have freaking Logan Paul cash in on Seth Rollins and it's a fucking win, 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 just goddamn do it type of situation. That's where the interest is to me. Oh, he didn't have to wrestle and qualify. Like, who gives a shit at this point? The WWE can use whatever the hell attention they can get. And Logan Paul can get them some attention. And Logan Paul, unlike most of the other jabronis in this fucking Money in the Bank ladder match, can actually bring the goddamn goods as an overall performer and talent. Don't get mad at me. Don't shoot the messenger because I'm spewing the reality to you. You know Ricochet has no fucking business winning Money in the Bank. Same thing with Shinsuke. Same thing with Santos Escobar. Same thing with Butch. Same thing with Damian Priest. There are only two viable options in this fucking match. Thank God they added Logan Paul because at least it adds an element of unpredictability to something that otherwise seem incredibly predictable with LA Knight winning it. 
But even then, as great of an option, a valid, viable option as LA Knight is, the smart money right now, to me, to me, you got to have Logan Paul win that fucking briefcase. 